Good morning, everybody. I was walking around the garden and noticed some pretty substantial, dramatic growth and beauty. So here I am again. Lemon, apple, cucumber, uh, round. You want to harvest this when it's uh, under the size of a tennis ball. No bitterness, just a beautiful, beautiful specimen. Super heavy producer. I, you will always hear me talking about the lemon apple cucumbers. So there it is. Last time I showed it, it was just a little nub. Now we're seeing some real development. I noticed on a couple of the videos just exactly how quickly I move the camera and how badly it shows up. So here we have some chive flowering happening. You have to excuse the dirty nails. You know, I'm always out here working and, and don't get cleaned up to shoot these videos. And uh, I'm on overload with weeds. Look at this beauty. There's Sam. Try and eat up all the fish food before they get it. <laughs> I, I've been trying to take them in after I feed the fish so they get a chance. They also eat the mint right there that's along, growing along the pond. And this is another real beauty. One of these days, I'm going to set up the camera on a tripod. Right there on those flower leaves, I get the craziest dragonflies that come here every day. And there are so many varieties of them, and I find them absolutely fascinating. It's one of those insects that seems to really be interested in what I'm doing and sits and observes, comes and gets really close to me. And I feel that, uh, I don't know, I just feel like he's watching me. This blue better sage that now has a little baby bumblebee on it has not stopped blooming since I put it in the ground three months ago when, when I got here. I just have a real fondness for blue and purple flowers, especially if you put them up against yellow. I think they're gorgeous. They're some of the last green leaf lettuce that I didn't pull. I'm actually going to let it go to seed. Even though it didn't get really big heads, I'm going to see what happens with the next generation. It appears that the uh, domestic blackberry is happy here. So the two others, three others that aren't happy in the back where they are, I'm going to put them up here in the fall. Nice, uh, nice chard. I'm not going to eat it. I'm going to let it go to seed. And here's some very beautiful spikes starting to flower, soon to be seed on the cinnamon basil. Same thing here with the sweet basil. I never uh, top these off, never pinch their their uh, flowers, so they're they're tiny, they're very tiny plants. And dive in arugula. Out back, the arugula is starting to go to seed. I'm gonna make some tomato deliveries today. Try to stay on top of the transplanting. Now I have pine straw to pick out of everything. Really, really beautiful dino kale and uh, flowering happening. And I'll get to the real reason why I pulled the camera out. This watermelon is, I, I can already see by the amount of flowering and babes that are on it, it's going to be a super, super producer. And here's a beautiful, beautiful flower. And I showed you this one a couple days ago. And look at the size of this thing. He's about seven, eight inches long. Nice markings. <laughs> Great to see. It's going over into the neighbor's yard, even though our property line actually is about a foot and a half over this where this fence is erected. Uh, I'm going to try to keep up. I was on the other side 
and uh, direct it up instead of letting it continue over into the yard. They're quite tenacious. So if you don't get them when they first start out, they really, they really grab hold. So here we have another baby and another baby hanging right there. They're just everywhere. But I won't bore you and just show you a whole bunch of watermelons. Little strawberries still. And something really enjoyed this smaller amaranth. It looks like lace right now. It's very interesting. And as you could tell, I don't believe in, in spraying things. Just let whatever happens, happens. If it's something that I'm really, really need the seeds from, then I go ahead and make up a mixture of a pepper spray and all natural dishwashing liquid. They're two separate ones, two separate mixes. And, um, and I, uh, I have a little spritzer bottle. I can't remember what kind of pepper plant this is, but this is a different one than the Cal Wonder and uh, the Albino Bullnose. Ampius, maybe? And that came to me. Yeah, I, th I believe it's Ampius. So here we have the mustard seed head starting. It's very, very spicy this year. It's usually spicy, but this year it was especially potent. We didn't eat too much of it. And there is the cilantro patch. Hopefully the cilantro will hold tough till I get enough tomatoes to make the uh, salsa. And there's the, the dill head, the, the seed head starting. Very pretty, delicate. Kind of reminds me of a green snowflake. And here are the very substantial radish seed pods. I'm usually better about keeping up with the yellowing leaves and, and removing those from the garden. This year has been tough with the, the canning of all the blackberries. That wasn't expected. So I've been running to the store a little bit more, picking up canning supplies. I keep underestimating exactly how many cases of the uh, of the mason jars. I like the wide mouth, 12 ounce. They're good for beans too. You know, trying to stuff beans into those little small openings isn't good, so I go for the small wide mouths. Lots and lots of activity with the pollinators. This one's still producing just male flowers, and unfortunately, I don't have any more seed to this variety of squash and uh, it wouldn't make a good seed stock with just one. Basil doing nicely back here. I don't think... Oh, there's the sesame. The sesame here has been slow growing. I'll re-sow it someplace else. And the rosemary that I kept in the pot is doing way better than this rosemary back here. Might not be getting enough sun. I might, you know... Uh, move it. Sam with his digging. This is another reason why I brought the camera out. Is this is a lovely cheerman. This is that Japanese variety squash. There's one more in the garden. Sweet potato vine finally popped up and like I told you it looks like a beautiful ground cover ornamental. So you could do these and nobody would ever know that there's food down below. These are all of the volunteer yellow flowers are all of the volunteer broccoli rob. And the arugula with its very delicate flowers. Gonna produce seed for me. And we have an exhaust it little baby bumblebee. He's taking a nap. 
I had a big fat bumblebee land on me yesterday. Lemon apples really filling out. Basil. Vine, not some kind of squash that I put in a pot. One of the secondary plants taken over the fence. And this is a cucumber climbing the fence. We have lemon apples that started developing in the garden. The uh, volunteer tobacco is now I'm finding it everywhere. This actually, out of all of the varieties that I grew, uh, this rounded leaf, I'm quite sure that this is the Hopi ceremonial. The uh, Shirazi has a very pointed leaf, as well as the Fragrant Delight. The Louisiana is an enormous leaf and an enormous plant, and the wild tobacco had a more elongated leaf, if memory serves me. So I'm quite sure that this is the Hopi. The flowers are coming on the sensations, mixed colors. So we'll get to see that very shortly, how many colors are in this uh, little mix. And the pole beans with their beautiful blossoms. It's funny. They're the small to largest. Now I would have thought it would have been the other way around. That end with the largest plant gets the shade first. And here we have more of the arugula going to seed. And this is um, new tomatoes that I just put in. I don't think my squash is going to make it. We'll see. He still, you know, has some life on the ends here. This guy's really going. Really, really taking off nicely. And the third sowing of the kohlrabi and Swiss chard looks fabulous here, as do the beets. Now, the um, kohlrabi, I've only ever talked about eating the bulb and if you're going to have a viable bulb it's very round and if it's not going to be a good specimen they start to elongate and get cylindrical so we have two nice bulbs here and then this one is actually starting to elongate what I wanted to mention on the kohlrabi is it, the leaves are actually edible they recommend that you uh, boil the leaves. I guess it's much like, like a collard leaf. That's a nice big specimen of an arugula. That's gorgeous. Have my work really cut out for me with cleaning up the pine straw and, uh, and weeding. Lots of, lots of Hopis all over these vines. <coughs> New ones starting. Good to see. The uh, apple trees back here and citrus trees are doing well. This is the second year for this citrus and these are all my new startup apple. Little volunteer tobacco plant. I'll show you more of those in the garden. That's an apple green eggplant, and I sowed a whole bunch of seeds, and I'm out of them, and I only have two plants left. This one's getting drowned out by how enormous the basil got. Not very good for a seed stock. Eggplant you really should collect from uh, 8 to 12 plants for a great seed stock. And here we have the black eggplant nice dark stems on it. There's another volunteer tobacco. And next year there will just be volunteers from everything. From the cress, from the tomato varieties, from tobacco, from flowers. Um, 
bell peppers, you know, normally you pick all of those. So I've never seen a, a, a volunteer uh, bell pepper plant. But if you leave some of those fruits on the vine and compost the plant, I'm sure that it would. Another volunteer of the tobacco. He got a little tall compared to the other ones because he was drowned out by a whole bunch of weeds. And that's a black mustard that has its seed pods on it, a few plants. So that that should be a really good seed specimen because the other mustard uh, hadn't gone to seed yet. You know, it hasn't even flowered yet. And here we have uh, bandit leeks. Leeks are very slow growing and they need a long time to get to seed. And you also need a good patch of them. You can't just leave, you know, a few plants behind. They have to have a good mix. And they produce stunning balls of flowers, just absolutely intriguing. So I have a little bit of time left before I really have to get on uh, getting these in the ground, but hopefully tonight. And here is the gorgeous specimen of this uh, chairman squash. I'm going to go get a collection cup as soon as I get off this camera. We have lots of ripe wonderberries. I did a uh, about a two and a half day fermentation on the wonderberry seeds and they um, they rinsed clean, relatively clean. There was some of the plant material, the, the fruit left behind, so I filled up a jar with some water and the plant material float, floats so it got to be poured off while the seeds stayed behind. I'm going to do, I did, an immediate sowing of the fresh seeds and I'm also drying seeds to see uh, what the germination rate is on, on both of them. And there's that beautiful foxtail millet cascading over. Just beautiful. I love this stuff. Lots of broccoli rob. All of the yellow flowers that you see are uh, the broccoli rob volunteers. And as I said, uh, the Thai edible gourd just isn't happening. Oh, that's definitely a volunteer tobacco. And there's more of the sensations mixed color that I put in. But here I'll, we'll do this. That is uh, one of the Thai edible gourds. The largest one is back here. And uh, this has the best growth on it right there. But nowhere near how beautiful the, uh, t the gourd is up front. It's getting pelted with some serious afternoon sun, and it's going to take over the, the deck. I'm quite sure of it. I've seen these things grow before, and, and uh, that vine gets really enormous. All right, let's take a walk up front. My beautiful, beautiful pups. I hadn't had time to do much leash training. But I take them for walks into the woods down the path and they stay about a step behind me. Bella likes to go off to the flank and examine things, but she comes right up behind and Sam uh, hardly ever leaves my side. And watch this just with a little whistle. <whistles> Nothing else need it. Here they come. Great dogs. I couldn't have asked for two better, I don't think. Beautiful companions. They bring lots of smiles to all of our faces with their uh, little antics. Sam's our clown. I've said that before, and he's the thief. He likes to uh, steal and tease. Now here, sewed weeks after the tie edible gourd, out back are these guys up front. 
I have to get that carpet out of there. I'll do that today. So, woo! So we could take over. Yeah, these guys are ornery. Delicate, delicate flowers. And spikes even on the leaves. <laughs> what a great plant to uh, put under your windows. <laughs> if anybody tried to get into your house, wow, would they be in for a surprise? And look at that. This is the drag dragon tongue beans. So we're going to get to see those really soon. All right, I'm going to get in the car, get some more berries. I did another 16 jars yesterday. My youngest son even had me sifting the seeds and making jelly. And let's see if we could get these guys. They know where to put their their webs. I don't know what this is, but I've noticed this spider right next to the very ripest of the berries. Just hanging out, waiting for that dinner. All right, excellent. I'll see you later. Enjoy your weekend. Much love to everybody. Arrivederci.